Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, is worth about $150 billion. That's enough to make him the richest man in the world by far and possibly the richest human being in all of human history. It's certainly enough to pay his employees well, but he doesn't. A huge number of Amazon workers are so poorly paid they qualify for federal welfare benefits. According to data from the nonprofit group New Food Economy, nearly one in three Amazon employees in Arizona, for example, was on food stamps last year. Jeff Bezos isn't paying his workers enough to eat, so you made up the difference with your tax dollars. Next time you see Jeff Bezos, make certain that he says thank you. What about the Walton family? They founded Walmart. Collectively, they're worth about $175 billion. That's more than the entire gross domestic product of Qatar, the oil-rich Gulf state. The Waltons could certainly afford to be generous with their workers. Instead, they count on you to take up the slack. In 2013, taxpayers sent more than $6 billion to Walmart's employees for food stamps, Medicaid, and housing assistance. And if you think that's remarkable, meet Travis Kalanick. He's the youthful founder of Uber. His personal fortune is close to $5 billion. His drivers, by contrast, often make less than minimum wage. One recent study found that many Uber drivers lose money working for the company. That's not a sustainable business model. The only reason it continues is because of your generosity. Because you're paying the welfare benefits for Uber's impoverished drivers, child billionaires like Travis get to keep buying bigger houses and more airplanes. He's someone else who owes you a thank you note. If you can think of a less fair system than this, send us an email. We'd love to hear about it. This system is indefensible. And yet, almost nobody ever complains about it. How come? Well, conservatives like us support the free market, and for good reason. The free market works. But there's nothing free about this market. A lot of these companies operate as monopolies. They hate markets. They use government regulation to crush competition. There's nothing conservative about that, just as there's nothing conservative about most big corporations. Just the opposite. They are the backbone of the left. Pick a left-wing cause that you think is hurting the country. Check the donor list, and you'll find the name of some corporation, often many corporations. Corporate America enables the progressive lunacy you see every night on this show. They are funding the revolution now in progress. That's exactly why liberals say nothing as oligarchs amass billions by soaking our middle class, because they've been paid off. For example, you probably assume the people who founded Walmart were conservative. Most of their customers certainly are. Yet the bulk of the Walton family backed Hillary Clinton in the last election. They gave the Democratic Party more than $700,000 during the 2016 cycle. Almost every billionaire in Silicon Valley did the same. In return for that, they got immunity from criticism and they got to keep forcing you to pay their employees. It was a good deal for them. There is one person in Washington who was offended by this arrangement, and we're sorry to say he's wrong on pretty much everything else. But this is a weird moment in American politics, so you take allies where you can find them. Bernie Sanders, of all people, is trying to get your money back from Jeff Bezos. This is especially amazing since Bezos is on Bernie's side on most things. They're both left-wing activists. But on this question, Bernie is right. He's planning legislation that would force big corporations to return the taxpayer-funded welfare benefits you have paid to their workers. It's not a perfect solution, and it's unlikely to pass. No matter what they may say in public, liberals in Congress would never support something like that. Their loyalty is not to you, it's to Uber and Jeff Bezos and the rest. But at the very least, legislation like this might awaken a sleepy population to the new reality of activist corporate America. And that's a good thing. America has changed enormously in the last 20 years. A lot of people you thought were your allies are in fact working against your interests. They have contempt for you and your family, your customs and your faith. Included in this group, I'm sorry to say, there are a lot of big corporations. They have no use for you or the country you grew up in. Stand in their way and they'll crush you. You're watching it all around us all the time. It's shocking, so shocking that I recently wrote a book about it. It's called Ship of Fools and it explained what happened, who did it, and why. The book is out in a month, the first week of October, but you can pre-order a copy now and I hope you will.